Hello, we are at Printed Solid, known for selling printer kits, Voron kits, and accessories, along with completed printers, but they also make filament and printer enclosures. How do they do that? Well, let's go inside and take a look. Okay, so instead of doing a fancy intro, I'm just gonna say, hey, hi, David. Hi, David. And uh, we're gonna show you how Jesse filament is made, because we're right here where it's made. Yeah. Well, sausage is made. Sausage is made, but filament. But okay. filament. Uh, it's like thin sausage. Thin sausage, but it's PLA, right? We're it's PLA. PLA today. Okay, so how do you make high quality filament? All righty. Well, you start with your high quality pellets, of course. Uh, so we're using the Indigo 4043D as our base resins. And uh, we actually dried out all that stuff. And we'll talk about that probably at, towards the end of the line a little bit afterwards. But this is where we start the extrusion process because it comes to us in these raw, a raw pellet form. Uh, from this machine, like this, and that is a raw PLA in there, and then there would be colorant added, but today they're actually running uh, natural, so they're running uncolored PLA. Okay, so if you were looking in there and you are doing like red, you would see little pellets of red mixed in. Exactly. Right? Okay. And uh, what happens is there's this long four-foot barrel, it's underneath this uh, wonderful cover here and it actually goes through six different temperature zones. It actually has to warm up and make this nice little ramp and then come back down to the final temperature. So, and that requires really fine tuning. That's how you get it relatively smooth. That's how you get the speed correct and stuff like that. We are processing give or take about a kilogram every four minutes uh, on this machine. So it takes uh, a lot of heat. We use about 200 amps of uh, three phase power uh, just to run the lines here. And here at Printed Solid, you have two lines, correct? Two lines, mirrored okay. image of each other. Awesome. We set it up that way so we only have one person operate it. Okay, now what type of machines are these? Like, is there a specific name? Are these just filament extruding machines or? These are actually plastic extrusion machines. Okay. Uh, they're modified for filament making. These are normally used on injection molding machines, smaller injection molding machines. They okay. just bolt this onto the side of the machine. Yeah, because this, this, I'm from a mold making background. So this, this aspect looks familiar. Um, the filament's coming out, and then all this is, what is this from originally? So these are actually water cooling tanks. They're custom made for this. They're also used in pipe manufacturing. So okay. if you buy a hose or a pipe, they manufacture it the exact same way. The water serves to, uh, several purposes. Uh, the first purpose is, uh, when it comes out, the extruder's coming out really hot. If you cool it down super fast, you're gonna get cracks, and it's gonna become distorted. So the water is actually kept very hot, and it cools down as it passes through multiple tanks so you don't get this cracked or milky surface that almost looks powdery on it. So you have to watch out for that. Okay. Um, the other surf it does is that it is ultimately the mold for the product because it's coming out in an oval shape and the water suspends it. If it came out milty and uh, didn't have the water, it can actually flatten out and become very egg-shaped or uh, get very oval on you. Okay, now going back to the, the extruder, is it the same similar setup you would see on an injection mold? We have a, a conical tapered screw uh, for mixing and melting the filament. Yes, it's a conical screw. Uh, the only difference is it has a, a pressure zone in there. Uh, we get about five tons of pressure on this machine, so it's a relatively light pressure. Um, but what it does, that squeezes out every, uh, all the air, all the, everything inside of it, and uh, to make a smooth flow of it, as well as it's mixing the color into it really tight. Awesome, so, and, and yeah. what size is it when it comes out of this nozzle here? So it's actually coming out of the hole there at four millimeters. Okay, and how, how do you bring that down to your final, I'm assuming 1.75 millimeter 1 diameter? So as you work your way down the machine, you're coming down through all the water tanks under different temperatures, and then you enter the cold one where it locks in, but down here, we have a tractor. This is a set of rollers here that pulls that plastic faster than the extruder is. And that's where those numbers, uh, that it pulls it out and that's how you get to 1.75. Okay. This is a laser micrometer. It actually measures uh, two axes to give us our average uh, of what our diameter is. We're staying within 0 0.02 on this machine. The other thing it is is that you have to have blowers here. This is what's blowing all of the uh, water off of the actual filament as it comes out. Okay, you can see it all being blown off there. So, and that's literally just the calcium deposits from water and stuff like that you see on okay. the machine from running all the time. So this is measuring the diameter, and if it needs to either shorten it or lengthen it, 
speed up or slow down to, to change adjust. the diameter. Awesome, so it does it here. So okay. it all manages that. And that's a pinch point, so don't put your fingers that's a in pinch there. Point. Okay. This is the accumulator, that's where it goes next. Okay. So this is actually a, a buffer zone so that the line, because once you get it up to speed, you can't stop. You just have to keep making filaments. Yep. Uh, so what'll happen is, is that this will move out. You'll actually see that here in a second. It starts to move away. And it's just collecting up all the extra filament while the guy's changing out spools. Oh, okay. So this gives you a buffer and about how long do you have before you run out of buffer, before you gotta be winding up filament again? Depending on the day, three to five minutes. Okay, so, so that's not plenty too bad. Of time. That's, that's not too bad. That's, how, that's why one person can run two lines without being overstressed or overworked. Awesome. Which is very important. And then you come over here to the final spooler, which is the final step in the phase. And there we and go. And it will actually start spooling. You'll see it'll, it'll actually speed up. It will go faster so that the accumulator comes back. back this way. Oh, that is cool. And uh, it's uh, set to come back slowly because it doesn't have to be super fast. And then it comes through here goes through our little straw, and then this whole assembly moves forward and backwards, and then the straw moves up and down to try and lay down the perfect bead on every single thing. Nice, no, no tangle filament from here, eh? Exactly. And then uh, they will literally vacuum seal it, put desiccant in, and they will seal the bag up right away. It's always fun to watch here because uh, it doesn't look like air's coming out, but then wait for it. And there you go. There you go. And now it's got this nice little seal. And now the is... nice thing is, is that kind of the way we have our operations here is that one guy can run both lines simultaneously. They also will assemble the spools. They will tag and bag the spools and they even get it into inventory. So the product, when it's made here, it's added to our store usually within a couple of hours. Uh, so when you see the stuff on the site, it's really how much we have in stock. Awesome. So, and we do a couple colors. We do a transition spools, primarily so we can get through all of our colors and have at least some in stock. And those transition spools is going from one color to the next one or something that's a slightly imperfect color. And we throw those on our sites just to kind of get rid of them uh, and not have that waste. Okay. Now, out here in the warehouse, this is where we actually prep everything. So out here, what we're doing is they will actually be mixing their colors. So today they're making quarter white and he's added his little colorant pellets and everything and uh, getting prepared for his shift, which is coming up soon. And then they'll clean this machine out between each different color and batch and everything like that. And uh, that's how they'll prep for their colors for the day. Now, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, those look like dog food containers. Is that where you're storing the, uh, the master colors? Well, this is Jesse <laughs> Filament named after a, a dog, so it makes perfect sense. But this is our master batch. Okay. So every single one of our colors, uh, we keep in these containers because we also want to keep that dry. Yep. So um, you mix a certain percentage of that with raw resin, mix it in there, and then that's what makes your final color for the filament. Exactly. And uh, we have our master batch made with a little bit of excessive uh, leniency, about 10%, give or take. So even though our ratio is 50 to 1, if my guys mess up with a little bit and add an extra ounce, it won't make a completely different color. It will okay. stay consistent. That's why a lot of people tend to say our colors don't kind of run or look faded. Is we're a little bit excessive on our color. Okay. Awesome. Which is nice. And then we have our series of dryers over here. So this is our bank of dryers. Uh, these are desiccant dryers. And uh, what it's doing, or what they do over here, is that they will load the pellets into it. And uh, P, uh, PLA we do for 12 hours. PTG we do for 24 hour drying cycles. And what will happen is they put it in there and it will dry it out. Uh, and then we will dump them into air sealed containers to use within that week. Okay. So awesome. we get a little bit of extra uh, buffer there as well. The pellets come to us dry, but the difference is, is that sometimes it's not, sometimes it is. So we don't trust it. So that's why we dry it as well. Okay. Uh, just to be safe. And then, uh, yeah, we uh, get our master batch in in these fairly large barrels here. But we put out just enough to... Uh, uh, fill up our dog containers, and then uh, it is uh, put on the rack, sold, and shipped. Awesome. So that is how the Jesse filament is made. Now you also do enclosures. How do you make those? Because I've, I've seen some boron kits with some ACM panels, so 
Okay. So those are all in another building. Okay, so let's go for a walk. All right. So we're across the parking lot now in your second building, and this is where the CNC and the Pew Pew is done, correct? That's correct. So we do our CNC uh, routing over here as well as our laser cutting. Okay. Uh, we do that primarily for our enclosures um, and our like four on panel sets and stuff like that. Awesome. Uh, in recent, uh, about the last two, uh, now three years now, we've switched over to ACM as our primary material. Uh, we made our enclosures and stuff like that all come from that, uh, which works really well for us. Uh, we were doing MDF before that and clear acrylic for everything before that. And we found it just became stronger, more durable, and also did a lot better on heat retention. Now, for those that don't know, what is ACM? So ACM stands for aluminum composite material. And if you actually look at a piece of aluminum composite, you'll notice that on the edge that you see two little silver bands and a black band in between it. You'll have um, aluminum on the either side of it and then you'll have a plastic core on it. That way, uh, what you end up with is that if you've ever milled aluminum this thick, you know it takes a long time and it's very expensive. This is a cost-effective way to kind of get the benefits of aluminum without actually being all aluminum. Awesome, and a little bit of weight savings too. And a little bit of weight savings and uh, the machining savings too, so it's really nice. Okay. Um, and uh, the good thing about it is, is that it makes it much more cost effective. I would have to charge a lot more, probably about three times as much if I did solid aluminum. Because it's going to take longer and it's going to be more wear on the machines and bits. And the aluminum sheets are just way more expensive when it's solid. Okay. So we have a good time with that. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll do here is that we process the kits and stuff like that. And then we actually hand clean each one, all their wonderful edges, one at a time. And um, it works pretty well for us. And uh, for the orders we get, it works out to be a decent number. Now, that's for our ACM. Now, for our acrylic stuff, we, of course, just laser cut it on our laser cutting machines. And uh, these, uh, they'll handle a three foot by four foot sheet inside. Okay. And you have two, it looks like? Uh, we, we run two here. And then we have uh, air filtration. A lot of people just uh, vent outside. We actually go through carbon filtering before we put it outside just so we, we uh, keep happy neighbors here. <laughs> uh, kind of voluntary, um, but that's why we have it. And uh, we like to call that machine Angry Bob, and that's why it has a little face and eyes on it, because it looks like a guy flailing his arms on the side. <laughs> uh, fun thing about these machines here is that uh, these look like those cheap uh, lasers you can kind of buy on eBay, but unfortunately the guts have uh, all been replaced, and pretty much it's just the frame that's left, so I like to call these Dave Randolph specials. Okay. So um, what you'll notice is that it has a whole different gantry, whole different optics, whole different laser tube, a uh, whole different bed, whole different everything. So much so that we've even had to raise the frame uh, by 20 millimeters. So we just shove some extrusion in there and it works pretty well. So pretty much the only thing that's original is the body on these. Uh, that's correct. Uh, literally just the outside frame and the oh. door hinge. So the door hinge was good. Yeah, the important part. <laughs> <laughs> So it works well, and then we exhaust at the top. We found that that was just better for fire protection and fire control and everything. Uh, one of the nice things about our acrylic is that we're actually very close to um, uh, one of the country's larger acrylic recyclers. So all of our scraps and remnants of acrylic get 100% recycled back into new acrylic. Oh, that's awesome. I really love it. It really helps the company keep a relatively low footprint. Okay. And now, uh, with ACM, unfortunately, that can't be recycled. Yeah, correct? ACM, unfortunately, is a composite material, which just you can't recycle composites very easily. So you just do your best to maximize the, the usage. Minimize the wastage. Minimize the wastage. So what we actually do is we've, uh, since we organize our pieces, we also have a panel cutter here, and we actually cut the ACM just specifically for that to waste the smallest amount we can. Uh, we even use the whole cutouts we do for other parts and other enclosures and stuff like that down the line and even fill out the inside of our tables with just all our scraps just to make sure we don't toss that in the trash as best we can. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so that's what we have. And we only have one guy over here and he actually runs all the machines, he cleans all the pieces, he packs all the pieces, and uh, literally takes them right over to the shipping department and they ship it out from there. So it's start beginning, middle, and end. So if you got the wrong panels or found a defect or anything like that, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to hurry up here so he can get his music back on. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's getting antsy on that one, we can tell. <laughs> awesome, thank you for showing me around. I hope everyone who watched this video learned something new and uh, gets a further appreciation of what Printed Solid does. Cheers. Everyone say hi, David. Oh, bye, David, bye, David. Bye, David, bye. <laughs>
So I hope you enjoyed this video and a look at the production of Jesse Filament and how a CNC printer enclosures here at Printed Solid. I want to give a huge shout out to Printed Solid for sponsoring my trip here out to the East Coast of the United States for the East Coast RepRap Fest. If you want to know more, links in the description for Printed Solid. Also, if you want to help support the channel, content I create, things I do, links in the description too. Hope you learned something new. Have yourselves a great day. Cheers.